Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rook with Garrett Toy Ag Trader Talk. Well, great in livestock futures, a lot of red on Friday here, Garrett. And I guess let's talk off first off about the kind of risk off environment that we saw here, kind of spilling over from the commodity sector, the outside markets. Where did that risk off come from? A lot of influence from the outside markets. I mean, we had the non-farms payroll this morning that came in a little bit disappointing. Um, you know, the, the mantra was after the, the, the inflation numbers last week were that um, as long as this, this job number didn't surprise anyone, uh, that we were going to see an interest rate cut at the FOMC in two weeks. Well, the, the job numbers came in <laughs> not great. Um, and those people were talking about a uh, half point cut or uh, in September, but uh, big picture, the talk of a, a full rate or a full point cut uh, by the end of December meeting. So um, a lot of macro influences, you know, you looked at the overnight trade overnight, the volume was light on the rally. Um, it seemed like there was a lot of profit taking, especially when you start to get into the shenanigans of the USDA report next week. Um, so the market may turn a little bit choppy. We did hit some near-term technical numbers. Um, you know, these corn um, up against this up against this old channel, uh, which is the bottom of the channel, uh, which is resistance. We tested it yesterday, the day before. It didn't really show us that it wanted to push up above those levels. And no beans here tested the. Uh, uh, the 50-day moving average at 10.30 and three quarters for the first time since uh, the end of May. So, um, you know, that number kind of held or those moving averages kind of held, saw some profit taking and uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. So with the big sell off on Friday, I'm sure you're going to have farmers that say, oh, man, is the rally over? What's your thoughts? I, I don't think so. Um, I think it's, it may be over for now. Uh, like I said, I, I'm 75 percent you know, confident that we've probably put in our lows. Can we have a setback? Absolutely. Um, do we push into new highs between now and October 15th? Probably not. I think you're, you're probably looking at a more choppy market over the next 30 to, to 45 days. Um, you know, when do we want to rally again? You know, harvest is 50% complete would be an, a, a, a perfect time. Uh, but right now it's, 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 uh, it's probably going to turn a little bit more choppy and see what uh, the USDA says as far as uh, what they think uh, the crop size is. Yeah, so the fact that we hit resistance doesn't necessarily mean that the rally's over, but what do we need to keep pushing the market? Well, you know, it, a lot of it, you know, it does have a big macro influence. So, uh, you know, if we start cutting interest rates and we see some of this big macro trade unwind, uh, that would put the dollar under pressure and, and would be friendly to commodities in general, um, you know, uh, above my pay grade. But, you know, a lot of speculation here is that, you know, if interest rates start coming down again, that this is, this could potentially refire the inflation problem uh, that we have. And, and uh, but we'll see. I think that, uh, you know, two years of higher interest rates have really kind of created a cash crunch for a lot of uh, uh, middle Americans and, and um, uh, is going to make things, uh, I don't think we're going to, see inflation fire back up that quickly. But, um, you know, I, I think we're just looking here to see if we bottomed, you know, are we going to have a V bottom or a W bottom? Um, you know, in theory, I mean, I, you know, we look at the charts, no beans could, you know, correct back to 980, potentially go back, test, test some trend line support at 975. Um, you know, that would be an area where, you know, if we held those areas of support, I would, and bounced, then yes, it would give us 100% confidence that we have bottomed in here. Yeah. Um, you know, we talk about the setback on Friday, Garrett, but honestly, uh, we have uh, two higher weekly closes now in corn and wheat and three in soybeans. That's still positive technical momentum, isn't it? <laughs> always, always the glimmer of hope here, always the bright side. Yes, exactly right. We still had a higher close on the week. Um, we, you know, we gave some back on Friday. Big deal. Um, you know, these the way these markets move, we can get back up at these levels. But I'm still cognizant about a major rally through harvest unless we have a production issue. Um, you know, I do kind of biases that, you know, what the USDA prints, the, you know, the, the crop was the largest 30 days ago, you know, with the lack of rainfall the month of August and some of this heat. Um, you know, I know the Northern Plains want to see some heat to uh, accelerate or push their crops along. Uh, but I, I feel like the top end has been taken off this crop. We'll see what the USDA says. Um, but I, at, the, at the end of the day, the crop is still big. It's just not as big as what it could have been, um, you know, 30 days ago. But um, I, I, it's just tough for me to get too excited about a rally here when we're 0% harvested. Uh, if we have a major rally through harvest, you know, the farmer's going to sell everything they, they, they want, you know, generate cash and go from there. So it's going to make it a little bit easier to rally once everything's in the bin. makes it a little bit di more difficult to buy from the farmer. Yeah. 
So you say we've maybe already traded the biggest crop. What is your sense about how slow USDA may, may be, though, in pulling yields down, if at all, here in the September WASD coming up? It'll. It, it, we're talking minor stuff here, and at the end of the day, I mean, we may revert back to, you know, those July numbers. But I mean, I'm still. I think we're above 180. Um, you know, I mean, it's you know, instead of a, a 183, 184, it's a 181, 182 type number, um, and uh, or one, you know, even you know, high 182s type numbers. It's 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 the, the amount of adjustments lower that I envision are minimal. Um, it's just that. And probably at the end of the day, the fact that we took a little bit off the top end of the crop is probably probably a good thing because because this crop could have been, you know, a, a big problem uh, from a production side, just massive crops um, if if the trend had continued. More of the dryness though would have impacted the soybean crop. Do you think we took some of the top end there? Do you lose a bushel? What do you think USDA does there? One bushel cuts uh, are, are pretty rare uh, without a major issue. I mean, um, I think that. You know, it's interesting. 30, 45 days ago, the CPC put out a warning about uh, flash drought in the Southern Plains. Well, you know, the flash drought has been in, in in Indiana and Ohio. It's been in the Eastern Corn Belt, and that's been part of the issue that's uh, been compounding the water issues on the Mississippi River because we're not getting that rainfall or that moisture out of the the Ohio River. So it's the other spectrum, it's the other side of the Corn Belt that's that's becoming a problem. In my opinion, though, I mean, it, it's it, I, a one bushel of that size of a cut in national soybean yield, uh, pretty difficult to attain. While the eastern corn belt yields may come down, I do think western corn belt yield, western corn belt yields could still increase. Yeah, and as long as you're talking about the water situation, how concerned are you about what's happening on the lower Mississippi with those low water levels? It's, it's a repeat of last year. Um, it's, it's not ideal, obviously. I think what it's going to do is it's going to create, um, it's going to create issues for the producer who cannot store grain, uh, who doesn't have access to, to storage or they have to sell grain across the, the scale. Um, you know, basis is going to be wide, carries are going to be wide. So obviously, um, you know, basis contracts are not something that you're going to want to do because the first time you roll them, you're going to, you're going to take a pretty good hit on them. Uh, however, you know, if you do have storage, if you're a producer who does have storage, um, you know, you look at what basis is, is after harvest, we get through these river issues. Basis is actually pretty decent, and I think it's going to get better after the first of the year. So if you're managing your space in that aspect, um, you know, especially if you have those abilities, um, it could create a situation where basis, like last year, basis feels better than what the stocks to use actually suggest that it should be uh, because it's going to become more difficult to originate those bushels out of the, far out of mm -hmm. the farmer's bins. Yeah. So Garrett, we had very strong new crop exports for corn and soybeans on Friday. The market kind of faded that. Do you, you know, get the sense that we're down at a value level? Are we going to continue to see exports go up? Uh, you know, a lot of it plays into the real. I mean, the South Americans aren't necessarily out of, out of soybeans or corn for that matter. Um, but no, I think we are at a value level. Um, you know, it's, it's noticeable that the river issues are creating issues as far as our pro or our, um, our ex whether how expensive we are in the world market a week to 10 days ago you know brazil us argentine uh, corn basically all within a dollar or two of each other um the differentiating uh, factor would be freight you know where they've been able to lock in freight um now you notice we had a lot of south korean tenders they were basically only allowing south american origin uh and now overnight we had we, we sold a, a cargo or two of of corn off the PMW uh, to, to South Korea. So, um, you know, I think that the, we're losing some business off the Gulf because of the river issues, but freight advantages off the PMW may help us. That's going to help the Western Corn Belt producer a little bit. So the cattle market down again on Friday, we're going to have a lower weekly close. Cash and cutouts were lower. How worried are you? Are we going to continue to see a bigger correction here? I, I think that this is the sell-off that we've been waiting for. We've been fearing for 18 months. Um, we went up the 180 levels in October and failed. Um, to me, it, it felt like that 180 level was uh, the line in the sand as far as whether we were going to uh, break this downtrend or confirm a downtrend. And the fact that we reacted lower tells me that we are, in fact, in a downtrend, unfortunately. Um, the market in the last week or two, I mean, go back two or three weeks, 
um, just hasn't acted very well. And, and markets that don't act well are not typically healthy and are not conducive to, to bullish reactions. So, um, you know, I, I feel like there might be some sort of market cleanse going on here. The macros obviously are uh, not going to support things a whole heck of a lot, especially if uh, more recessionary fears are building out there. But, um, you know, for the time being, uh, the charts are not going to be supportive. No. And as far as the hog market, are we seeing a technical correction there too, do you think? And how much bigger of a slide? Yeah, I think, I think hogs are kind of in the rider seat right now. We had a technical correction today. I still believe we're in an uptrend here technically. Uh, fundamentals might be a little bit negative near term, but um, it just feels like today's a, a correction. Go back and test some support uh, and, and, and test conviction there and see how uh, willing buyers are going to be on some weakness. All right. Thanks for joining us. Garrett Toy, Ag Trader Tuck, that is Markets Now.